Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. This is Costume Quest from Double Fine. This game normally retails for $15, however I picked it up during the winter sale for just 3 as you will see on your screen, Costume Quest and Grubbins on Ice, both represented here. Grubbins on Ice is the DLC. As far as I am aware, it came for no extra charge with my PC version. I can't find anything out there to substantiate that, but I didn't pay for it. So that's the assumption that I feel safe in making. Costume Quest is an RPG. It's really reminiscent of games like Earthbound, the sort of game that has an at-first kid-friendly theme, but is actually intelligent. And I think that's a wonderful thing to do. Just because a game is intended for kids doesn't mean that it has to be dumbed down. Kids are smart. I was smart when I was 12. Kids today are smart as well. So being that this is a double fine game, it is intended for the uh, console platform, almost forgot what those things were called, the <laughs> console platform, and that means that the uh, these settings are a little bit sparse, they do have some basic stuff, Double Fine is pretty good about giving that sort of stuff, in fact, uh, I saw that they actually put an FOV slider into stacking because one person requested it on the Steam forums. So that's pretty cool, and I mean, if you didn't already know how cool Double Fine was in the first place, where have you been? So anyway, Costume Quest, the mission at hand. Let's go ahead and get in to this. I'm going to resume my game in progress. And like I was saying, this is, uh, at first glance, a childish or childlike sort of game. And it is, in fact, deceptive in its original appearance. It really does have an intellect that is below it. It's not the most complex RPG that I have ever played, certainly, but it has a fun factor and a sort of a smartness to it that you wouldn't necessarily uh, expect. And I think that has led to the game not getting the reception that it damn well deserves. And so I'm doing my little part here to try and bring the awareness up. So uh, for a little bit of backstory, well, you play as one of two twins. And uh, this fellow behind me, as you can see, is clearly not my twin. He is Everett, a friend that I have picked up along the way. I saved him from bullies. But you play as one of two twins, the boy twin or the girl twin. You pick the one that you want, and the other one is kidnapped by Grubbins. Grubbins are these sort of goblin creatures that are going around on Halloween night and cleaning out all the houses of their candy. That is a nefarious plot indeed, and of course, we the children are the only ones who can stop them. So this is the gate behind which we assume the Grubbins live. We've seen it communicating with some of the Grubbins, and we have communicated with the gate as well. Uh, what we have learned from the gate is that it will not open until this entire neighborhood is cleared of candy, meaning that every house has been tricked or treated. So that's what we're trying to do right now. Why? Because we know that our sister is through this gate. So we got to get there and we have got to do that by clearing all of the houses. Now that's a really smart way that this game ends up adding in combat. Instead of having these random encounters that just pop as you walk around the overworld map, they force you to go to these houses. Each house is then a possible random encounter. You're either going to trick or treat and get candy, or you are going to get combat. So I'm going to try to show you that right now. We're going to start out with the combat. I'm going to trick or treat at this house. Uh, as it is with the international rules of Halloween, if the light is on, the person is there with candy and would like you to knock on their door. If the light is off, don't go to that house because they're either out of candy or they are dicks. So here we go. Trick or treat. And it is, that may look like at first glance an evil thing, but it is just a dude in a cowboy suit. And I love the fact that when they give you candy, there's that anime motion blur behind your bag as it, as it drops in. This game is full of brilliant touches like that. Uh, the dialogue is whip smart, it's witty, it's funny. And this game, I'm telling you, top to bottom, this is a charming game. If you love RPGs, you will absolutely love this, especially if you love old school RPGs or things like Animal Crossing, that sort of stuff, where stuff is a little bit cutesy, but there is an inherent depth below that cutesy exterior. 
so let's talk a little bit. I'm going to try to get in combat for you uh, here in a second, but let's talk a little bit about the costumes that I am wearing. You can see I'm dressed as a robot, and my friend Everett is dressed as a knight. You can change those costumes on the fly. You see I have access to three costumes. Everett and I can switch costumes. And then I have this Statue of Liberty costume. Statue of Liberty costume I had to construct in order to get into a Halloween party that had a patriotic theme. So I constructed the costume and I got inside. So uh, this costume I believe will work for combat, but if you look in the upper right hand corner you notice that it doesn't have a special icon. The two other costumes both each have uh, some sort of special ability. You can see I can shield us here. And on the other costume, I can actually go fast. And uh, this can be used, as you might imagine, to go over ramps that will allow you to access special secret zones and open these little coffin chests. The coffin chests will often contain candy or maybe parts for costumes you're trying to construct. Uh, right now, I'm not trying to construct any costumes, so uh, mostly I would just get candy out of those chests. Just about anything that you can bash with your bag will give you candy. That includes the mailbox, the fire hydrant, some pumpkins, cars. Well, not cars. Let's see. Cars? No. But you can see there's a friendly, helpful icon when you are near something that might potentially give you candy. There it is. Love it. Use it. Candy is currency, so you want to collect every little bit you can. You'll see other kids walking around trick-or-treating. You can interact with them. There's not going to be much there. Uh, the game will note NPCs of, uh, of, of, uh, of note. Well, I was looking for another word than note, but the game will note NPCs of note. So, yeah, where were we? Uh, wonderful, whimsical, lovely combat. Let's try to get into combat here. Let's see if anybody is home. Let's trick or treat. Maybe we will get an evil grubbin? No. We will get a, a wonderful ginger cowboy. Thank you, sir. That amazing background again. And I'll take that candy. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We're clearing again. We're clearing the neighborhood. Uh, this might be a good time to stop and show you a little bit about questing. So this is your notebook, and I love the fact that it's a notebook, because what, what a thing that a kid would have, just like a little spiral-bound notebook in their pocket, and they would use that to keep up with all of their RPG <laughs> statistics. So uh, you've got battle stamps. These are our statistics. Simple. You've got HP. You've got uh, AP. Simple. These battle stamps can be used to increase your particular stats. In this case, uh, Reynolds is wearing the robot costume. The robot costume is more of a DPS costume. And Everett is wearing the knight. The knight is more of a tank. So I give him some extra HP, and I give Reynolds some extra AP. So we have quests. Our overarching quest is this Auburn Pine Suburbs quest, which is trick-or-treat at all the houses, and then save my sister, Ren. And we got to find out more about the creepy witch. So there was a plot point where a creepy witch emerged from that gate and destroyed my costume. I then had to rebuild my robot costume, and that was how they introduced the idea of building costumes within the games. Uh, so there is an ongoing game of hide-and-seek. So I'm always on, the, always on the lookout for kids who are hiding behind things, as well as we need to get some pie for the for the putter putter pum putter pum Putterpam. Uh, Mrs. Putterpam is in need of pie ingredients. So we actually did find a cherry that we will bring to her later. So she's just acting as a simple blockade. You can't get through her until you find this uh, cherry and bring it to her so she can make a cherry pie. Simple RPG stuff here. This is almost like, you know, baby's first RPG kind of stuff. It's simple, but it's effective, and it's wonderful. And there are more quests that I have going on simultaneously. The main quest, though, is trick-or-treat at every house and get that gate open. The side quests are going to come and pop up as you uh, venture around, so just keep moving, and you'll see the side quests, and those will often lead you to treasure or lead you to new costumes. So let's cross our fingers for combat here, because it's about the last thing I need to show you guys. Come on, Grubbins. There we go. It's an evil, evil Grubbins. I made him lose count of the candy he was stealing. So this is one of my favorite things about this game, of course. This is the kid's imagination. So here I go. 
I am a robot and Everett is dressed as the Statue of Liberty. I forgot to put him back into his, uh, forgot to put him back into his knight costume. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it's actually good because I haven't seen the Statue of Liberty in play at all. So that's, uh, that's cool. We'll get a chance to see Lady Liberty putting the smack down on some grubbing ass. So we're going to attack. And when we do, there's going to be a little bit of a sort of a quick time event, just a timing thing. Uh, it'll often prompt you to press buttons or jam a, uh, jam a stick in one direction or another so you move l to to power that impressive flame up nice nice and you'll occasionally get a t an opportunity like that a timing based opportunity to defend so that was good man everett is taking a beating all right so let's go ahead and finish off the first grubbin warlock oh missed my timing but that's okay he is dead all right what can we do here I love that the national anthem, the anthem is her is her attack. Oh, a little self self status effect there. All right. Ah, uh, you'll notice I have Y. My missile barrage is up. So this is my attack that charges throughout the battle. It doesn't require me to do any uh, QTE trickery. Just hit it and kick some ass with it. Gotta love that amazing missile barrage, and it explodes that grubbin into nothing. So I got some XP, I got some candy, and I got a card for my collection. There's a little sort of sub-game within the game where you're collecting cards and you can trade them. Uh, but this is another house cleared, another step closer to getting my sister back. This game is ultimately just a wonderful basic RPG. It's got all the elements that you would want to have in a casual sort of RPG, but it's really, really fun. Don't let the simplistic nature of the graphics and the childlike theme fool you. I mean, this game is top to bottom, charming, and I've honestly fallen in love with this game. And that is uh, something I don't hesitate to say. It really is a fantastic journey. I'm loving this game so far, and I really, really recommend it. I want you guys to at least check it out. Look for it on sale and try to pick this game up because it is so worth it. Five bucks, ten bucks, I think it's worth fifteen bucks, in my personal honest opinion. So let me go ahead and head out of this area. We will play this for a couple more minutes and then send you guys on your way. What have we here? All right, there are more houses I believe I need to trick or treat at. Right, let me get Everett out of that costume. What are we doing here? Okay, Everett's into the night costume, yeah. So there are more houses we need to trick-or-treat at, but I'm going to go ahead and progress to the next section of the neighborhood uh, just so I can get a, a nice look at it, and you'll be able to see me completing a quest here. We'll talk to her. Cherries, this is your ingredient. Did you happen to notice that it's Halloween tonight? We're sorry, Miss Pup, but, but, Butter Pam. This is all we could find on such short notice. Maybe come in, please? Yes, fine. I lost her voice. Yeah, anyway, you get the point. There's dialogue. So here we go. Complete a quest. Nice. Get some XP. And we are moving on. More houses to trick-or-treat at. And more little quests to do here in the world. These little police boxes serve as a place for you to save your game. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, my report has been logged. I love the fact that your your save point is the police making fun of you for reporting that there are monsters in your neighborhood. It's, this game, part of the reason that this game succeeds is because it never, it never makes fun of itself to that extent. You know, it is lighthearted, but it always takes its theme seriously. You know, it, it never takes an opportunity to be cheesy. Uh, it always stays true to its theme, and, and the comedy uh, the lines are right on. Everything is uh, spot on. Uh, everything exists in this world, and you, it's a believable world uh, for you as a player. Oh, missed that ramp. And I think that's part of the reason that I continue to enjoy this game uh, as I play it, and, and the reason that it succeeds is that I'm in the world and I buy it. You know, I buy this world existing as much as I used to buy the Animal Crossing world existing, uh, or even Earthbound. Uh, or any RPG, you know, if the RPG, if the game takes itself seriously, uh, then you can take it seriously. And when I say takes itself seriously, I don't mean that sort of dour gentleman who has no fun whatsoever. 
I mean takes itself seriously as in it commits to its theme. And this game does indeed commit to its theme. So uh, I'm kind of hunting around here looking for something cool to do before we sign off of the video. But on the way out the door, I will mention uh, that Double Fine is an amazing studio. If you don't know that uh, from evidence, as evidenced by the Kickstarter, and if you haven't, you need to go and watch all of Tim Schafer's Kickstarter videos that he did for the, for the Kickstarter page because they're hilarious. Uh, you know, Tim Schafer is one of those guys that you just want to know in real life, and you want to be an employee of his because the way that this game came about was right after Brutal Legend 2 was canceled. Uh, Tim basically said to his guys, hey, let's split up into teams and let's make uh, some games. A couple of weeks, let's do a game jam. And that's what they did, a two-week-long game jam. And what came out of that game jam is Costume Quest, uh, Iron Brigade, formerly Trenched, Stacking, and Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster. And he made them all. You know, they put them all out, and they all did quite well. I mean, whether they did well monetarily or not is a part uh, separate from the fact that they were all really well critically uh, received, and there was a lot of good press about all of those games. But how amazing is that? I mean, what if you were at work and your boss came to you and said, hey, for a couple of weeks, we're just going to goof off and try to do something really amazing and new? Wow. I would just... I would have kittens if my boss came to me and said that. Then again, I wouldn't really know how to do a game jam type scenario at my job, but you get my point. The idea here is that that's one amazing dude, a guy who comes to his folks and says, you know what, we're at a low point. We've just had uh, what we expected to be uh, our next big game canceled. Show me what you got. And what came out of it were four downloadable titles, or I guess technically Once Upon a Monster is a package box game, uh, but three downloadable titles and uh, a Connect game. And I'm glad that they exist. I'm glad that Tim Schafer exists, and I'm glad that Double Fine exists. I think this game is worth your time. It's wonderful. It's lovely. It's the sort of thing that there needs to be more of. Every... Oh, that's a banana guy. Peanut butter jelly time. Every game doesn't need to be The Witcher 2. Every game doesn't need to be Final Fantasy 13 x 2 squared. They don't always have to take themselves seriously. There was a time when Final Fantasy was cutesy characters in a cutesy world. I mean, the Moogle guys? The little white cherub guys and the freaking chocobos? I mean, think about what that's, that series used to be. It used to be what this game is right now. And we need a lot more of this. Every single thing in this world doesn't need to be serious 24-7. A game like this has a wonderful place in this world, and I'm glad that I have gotten a chance to found you. I'm glad that I've got the chance to actually take this game in and appreciate it for what it is. I'm going to play this game to completion with a smile on my face. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. I hope this has been enough of an introduction to Costume Quest for you to actually think about purchasing it. Uh, games like this make me wish I had sort of a Jeff Gersman or a Vinnie Caravella or, you know, a Patrick Klepik. I need somebody here, like Quick Look style, who I can have a dialogue with because I'm having a great dialogue with you guys, but I don't have any feedback on your side. You know, I need somebody to act as the uninformed everyman. So uh, if you'd like to relocate to North Carolina where we just made gay marriage double illegal and sit in a small room with me while I ask you questions and you ask me questions about video games, please send your resume to yada yada yada. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and as always, take it easy.